Welcome everyone, it's a wrap with rap. I am your host, Ron Rappaport. This podcast features people who have overcome life's challenges and adversities, people who can inspire and motivate, and people who can educate us on an assortment of topics. My guest today is Chris Vane. Chris is the founder and executive director of the Little Bear Sanctuary located in Punta Gorda, Florida, a nonprofit farm animal sanctuary. Chris, originally from New York and working in the healthcare field, experienced some life challenges there that he had to overcome to get where he is today. Chris is here to share his story of resiliency and never giving up and to tell us all about his farm animal sanctuary and offer to us why never giving up on your dreams is important. Welcome, Chris, to the podcast. Hey, Ron, how are you? I'm Thanks great. for having me. <laughs> oh, it's good to have a fellow Floridian on. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you're... I was going to ask you how the weather is, but I guess we know how that is. Well, right? <laughs> yeah, we're probably about maybe five degrees cooler than you. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Tell us what your uh, early years were like growing up and your career in the medical field in New York. Yeah, so uh, born and raised in Yonkers, New York. Um, and oh gosh, uh, you know, I, I always loved New York City. So I, you know, the second I, when I turned 18, I was down, you know, went, uh, went to college at School of Visual Arts, uh, had an art degree for, for you know, um, quite a few years. And uh, Strangely, ended up working at New York Hospital. So it was then that I became interested in, in medicine and uh, went back to school and became a PA. Went to Long Island University, uh, did my rotations at Brooklyn Hospital. And uh, yeah, moved, moved to the city. <laughs> All right. So right around 9-11, you're living on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Yes. And your partner of 12 years, Russ, was on a health decline. Can you tell us about that and what finally ensued with Russ? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Russ, um, he uh, he was HIV positive for many, 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 many years. And uh, he ended up getting Lyme disease, uh, which unfortunately went undiagnosed for about two years. So by the time they caught it, it had already turned to neurologic um, and he was having you know, between, you know, the, the, um, uh, between the HIV, between, you know, the neurologic Lyme, which at that point, you know, you throw people on antibiotics, IV antibiotics, and most of the time it's a long-term, yeah, you know, long-term neuro problems. So uh, unfortunately his short-term memory really declined drastically. Um, he, he was experienced, you know, I guess you would call it early onset dementia, given all his health issues and then throwing that on top of it. So um, it was, gosh, you know, right before 9-11, I'll sort of give you a leading up to 9-11. Um, I would say that year prior was when we really figured out what the issue was. Yeah. And, um, you know, Russ had been a nurse in his, you know, previously, uh, before he worked on Wall Street, we all changed careers, right? Yeah. Um, and, sure. um, you know, I, I came home one day and, you know, you remember, the, I don't know if you guys down here, but there was always a movie of the week that was on like Monday through Friday. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he was already, um, you know, he was, he wasn't working anymore. He was on uh, disability and I came home and he's watching whatever the movie of the week was that Monday. Tuesday, I come home and he's watching the movie again. I'm like, same movie, that. same yeah. movie. And I'm like, man, you just you were watching that yesterday. <laughs> what are you doing? He's like, I've never seen this movie before. And I was like, oh, OK. Wednesday, same thing, Ron. He same movie on. And I'm just like, I, you know, I, I you knew sort of. Right there, I was like, okay, this is really getting bad now. And um, yeah, Thursday, Friday, I mean, it was every day and he, he had no memory of it. And, you know, that by Friday, I, I, you know, I sat him down and we had a really long talk. And, you know, it's, it's when you don't remember when you're having dementia symptoms and you can't remember you, it brings up a lot of anger. Because yeah. the person telling you basically you're you don't you know and I'll and I'll use the movie as an example, um, you know he 
had no memory of ever seeing it, right? So even right. if he's watching it every day, um, he's not believing you. He's not believing, you right. know. And then, right. so it's sort of like you know. So we had this serious conversation, and you really have to trust the person to, you know, to help them. They have to trust you that what you're saying, you know, yeah. that you're not, you know, and you know, we were together for 12 years. So he, he understood it. And, you know, and there was other issues leading up to that. So, you know, we had this really long discussion. And um, so I, I guess he decided that he wanted to not be a burden. So un unfortunately, uh, a month after 9-11, he committed suicide. Um, I was not prepared for that. I It took me a little bit to kind of figure it all out when it, after it played out. And, you know, had he had lived another six months, he would have probably been hospitalized or somewhere where they, you know, I yeah. mean, it would have been really bad at that yeah. point and it was getting pretty bad. So and it took me a while to figure that out, but, um, uh, you know, called 911 every, you know, you figure, you know, played it, it played out the way it was, you know, crazy, insane day of my life. Uh, you're, I, I, it, it's weird to talk about it now. It's so long ago. Um, it's, people always ask, you know, like, where, what happens to your brain? You know, like, where, what, what happens? And I, and I, and I describe it as I, I was just, I felt like I was just like on this automatic pilot and it, yeah. it was just very foggy, you know, and. No, I can uh, understand that. I can it was a month after nine 11. So they couldn't even come get the body till like after midnight, one in the morning, it was just one of those nightmare days. Yeah. Uh, and we lived in a rent controlled apartment on the upper West side didn't have my name on the lease, you know, back then we were young, we were, you know, you've never sure. thought about, right. you know, it wasn't, it, it was never even a thought in our minds, you know, yeah. like to do you're that. Enjoying, you're enjoying life. Yeah, you yeah. know, and so the next morning I called the landlord. Now being, I've been there for 12 years, mm -hmm. right? And Isadora Silverman, she, I, she's like, Chris, I'm so sorry. I heard what happened. You know, I'm so sorry about Russ. And I said, thank you. You know, I said, would you mind if I come down and put my name on the lease? Cause it's something that I never did. Yeah. And she's like, uh, she's like, let me call you back. Yeah. Like, right. So two hours later, her attorneys called me back and said, we don't know who you are. Not a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, this couldn't get any worse. Right. Yeah. So uh, at that point, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have no place to live. I, you know, talk about a nightmare. Uh, so a friend of mine who is in politics, uh, he said, call Lambda Legal. He knew some people. Uh, Lambda Legal is a, it's a LGBTQ law firm and um, they help their community by taking on heavy duty cases, you know, they, they sure. do it for, for free. Sure. So they, they, they took it on. Thank goodness. Um, it was a year, a year in the courts as I was living there, they wouldn't accept my rent. So, you know, I had to save up the rent money and it's, so it was literally a year yeah. living like that, having to show pictures of us together and documents. And yeah, I, I can't even begin to tell you it was so invasive of my privacy and my life and given everything that happened, you know, it was just this constant, there was no peace, you know? It was kind of like rock bottom. It was, it was well, I thought at that time, but it, it did, get, it definitely got worse. Um, so yeah, so a year later, the date, the actual date of his death, it was the court date and uh, I, I did win. Um, at that point, my mental health really declined. Um, I had been doing serious drugs. Um, I just, I, I, I didn't want to feel anymore. That's the best way I can describe it. And I didn't care anymore. Yeah. I didn't care if I lived anymore. And um, I was completely hopeless. And I never knew 
what that feeling was. You know, you hear people talk about it. You hear yeah. about people who commit suicide who are hopeless. And I really, Ron, I just literally didn't care about anything anymore. I hear you. I hear you. Um, so won the court case. And at that point, I didn't even care, you know. Um, yeah. I was in a... Uh, I was in medicine. I was in a, in a research position, so I wasn't seeing patients, thank goodness. Um, and uh, it was just like this nonstop nothing. I mean, I, I it's the memories of it are so foggy. Um, yeah. And, and I guess it was probably a year after that. Yeah, it had to be. It was, it was literally after the court case. Um, that October, uh, I, I said, if I don't leave New York, I'm going to die. And I called my parents and I told my mom, I called my mom, like, mom, I said, I'm going to move to Florida. <laughs> and she's like, really? Oh my God. That's great. I, yeah. Mom, she's she's happy. Like, yeah. She's so excited. Yeah. And my dad gets on the phone and he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's like, what are you gonna he's like you're you got this you're you got a career you got a, what are you what are you doing you know like they didn't know at the time what i was going through right other than right. you know with russ they didn't know the drugs and yeah. all that craziness so um i literally in two weeks i was packed up and i moved in with them for a few weeks <laughs> but you but you leave for florida for, a change, for, florida. for, for a change of scenery and you moved yeah. to miami beach I did. What What did you do there, and for how long? Did you do that? <laughs> so, I thought about going back into medicine. I, I really, I was, I was truly burnt out. I think at yeah. that point, from medicine, from you know, I, I was an uh, HIV AIDS specialist. I just think you know, I gave my time to my community, and um, I wanted to start over. Sure. And you know, the first six months in Miami Beach were fabulous and you know it was like being on vacation and i really it really got me out of that insanity and it saved my life it, it really did um and i ended up working for a nonprofit for like two years and then i became a realtor <laughs> so i was a realtor for 10 years it can't be that you move to florida and you become a real <laughs> going to real estate how many people do that uh, <laughs> too many <laughs> But yeah, you know, it was um, it was a it was a it was a great ten years. Um, it sounds uh, like it, yeah. Yeah, it was. And, and yeah, you're in nice, warm weather, you know. I yeah, exactly. You, you I did really that. well, um, and uh, and it was I when I turned fifty, <laughs> I was in a real estate seminar. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Now you 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 moved back. Then you moved to Punta Gorda. I did. I ended up moving to your, closer to mom to and dad. Parents. Um, only child. Mom. Right. Uh, my mom had had a stroke two years prior, and I figured, you know, I, I got to be up there closer. And I figured, yeah, I could just do real estate up there, you know. Right. Like, and then you 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 you're at a you're at a uh, real estate seminar, right? Yep. Yes. And and you get a light bulb moment. Yeah. Tell us about that. Um sitting in a real estate seminar, three week, crazy intensive on following your passion in real estate. And I'm, I think within the first week and what truly a light bulb moment, like talk about coming out of nowhere, right? I had always wanted to be a veterinarian. I'd been vegan for a while. Um, yeah, I always loved animals. And I literally just, I just said to myself, I'm gonna open up a farm sanctuary. Like it just came to me. Wow. Um, yeah, I I was trying to figure out how I could, you know, work in the animal community without doing another crazy, drastic anything. But yeah, with me, it's all or nothing. So <laughs> changed, changed, changed careers again <laughs> and uh, became a vet tech for uh, in preparation for this crazy adventure. And, yeah. and, and you studied to be a vet tech. So, <laughs> so you were doing that, figuring if you ever start something, 
you would have that. Yeah, my five year doctor. plan was to at least get the medicine down because I had looked at sanctuaries and rescues and veterinary costs were their biggest downfall and their biggest expense. Right. So I figured, let me become, you know, let me get involved in the field and yeah. I can learn a lot and I can save a lot of money. And, and it ended up working out great. The vet that I worked for, you know, I had told him going into this, that's what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he's now on our board of directors and he does everything for us for a very, um, for cost basically, which is unheard of in the animal community. So yeah. Well, tell tell us about <laughs> tell us about your mom Ursula, and her love for animals, <laughs> and her dream of helping animals. Did that did that? How did that affect you? Um, my mom was uh, she was was such a great person. She um, born in born in Germany, came over, you know war bride that kind of thing um and she had the german accent uh, she worked in a factory for 20 years and uh she truly like she 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 told you like it was it was so funny she um had no filters she was so much fun and um she loved animals um i she truly you know, we always had, we always had a dog. I, I always had hamsters. I had, you name it. I had every animal growing up and, and I always had a special connection with animals. She had a special connection with animals. Uh, and she really, you know, my love for animals, it, it she's definitely a big part of that. Um, her compassion was amazing with people and with animals. She, um, my father was a, a Yonkers cop, so you can imagine that dynamic, right? And, yeah. <laughs> and she was totally opposite. She, yeah, I was going to say there's two poles. She there. accepted everybody for who they were, thank goodness, yeah. right? Um, they accepted, you know, she, I came out when I was 18, back in 1980, when there was no coming out, there was no TV shows about anything, there were no computers. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know. She did what a mom did and she accepted it. And shockingly, yeah. my father accepted it too, which was pretty shocking. And, uh, but I, I'm sure she had a big to do with that. Um, now, now, Ursula, but, yeah, Ursula has everybody, a... every culture, every person, every, you know, no, no matter, you know, where they were in their life. And, and that was the, her biggest thing with me. She always supported me 100% in anything I wanted to do. Yeah, she sounds like a great woman. Now, yeah. Ursula, that that name means something in Latin, doesn't it? Yep, it means little bear. <laughs> little bear. All right, we'll get to that. Yep. What is the mission statement of the sanctuary you're running? Yeah, um, our mission is uh, we rescue farm animals from abuse and neglect, um, and we give them a permanent home here at the sanctuary where they live out the remainder of their lives in a cruelty-free environment. And, and we're a true sanctuary. We don't, none of our animals are kept in cages or pens. We're on 30 acres. They run around in their natural habitat. Uh, we are um, Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries Verified, which is 3% of sanctuaries in the world to get that verification. Wow. And it's given to true sanctuaries that have the best policies, the best animal care. You know, it's like you know, 200 page application, site visit, it's, it's, it's a big deal. And, and um, yeah, it sounds that way. Uh, how did you go about securing uh, a space for the sanctuary? And how did you find your first rescue animals? I, it's funny. <laughs> um, I, it's the day before I started my new job as a vet tech. Uh, it was <laughs> Easter Saturday, the Saturday before Easter <laughs> in 2016, 2016, okay. 20, 20, 20, 20, yeah, 2016, gosh. Um, I, I met Randy, my husband, um, and uh, we, were, we were out with friends at a bar. Neither one of us knew each other, but we had the same friends. And um, yeah, we... You know, love at first sight, Ron. What can I say? Yeah. Um, we hit it up. The rest yeah. is history. The rest right. is history. So we were living in Fort Myers. We had a house in Fort Myers. 
And uh, I think probably the following, unfortunately, my mom passed away in November of 2016. And uh, we, in February of 2017 is when we started looking for property. We decided, you know, let's do it. And it was actually the first listing that came up on realtor.com. How crazy is that? Yeah, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a house on 10 acres. We, um, we went to go look at it and it went under contract. <laughs> and two weeks later, it came off a contract. And um, that's when we got our contract in. And we had to, it had to be contingent on our house selling. It was one of those complicated yeah, yeah. deals. And uh, yeah, it went through. And we moved in, oh gosh, August of 20, yeah, August of 2016, 2017. Uh, what hurricane was that that month? Because that's when the hurricane came through. Irma? Could be, yeah. yeah. I, there, there was so many back then. <laughs> how did you? How yeah, did so you... two weeks later, we moved in. Two weeks later, Irma hit. And thank goodness we didn't have any animals. No did, electricity how... for three weeks. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how did you find your first rescue animals? Uh, once we Once our name was out there, we got a phone call, probably... Uh, let's see august it had to be october ish maybe and it was a lady a local you know woman in naples who had a pet piggy that she couldn't take care of anymore and she asked if we would take it and wow. that's how it started that's how it <laughs> willie, started willie the pig they knew they knew you had the property and the work yeah we out. had already been yeah. we, we yeah had, we had the nonprofit paperwork all done in July. So we were at a website at that point. We were, we were ready to go. Chris, tell us the species of animals uh, that there are to the, there today and, and the total number on the sanctuary. Yeah, sure. Uh, gosh, we've got uh, just a little bit over 200 animals. 200, uh, we, wow. Yeah, 200. Uh, we've got pigs, cows, goats. Uh, chickens, donkeys. Uh, um, did I say sheep? We've got sheep. Nope, you didn't say sheep. Yeah, we've got sheep. We've got a whole herd of sheep. Uh, 135 pigs total. Lots of pigs. That's everybody, I think. You have a favorite animal? <laughs> yeah, everybody asks me that. Um, oh, gosh. You know, I always say it's Willie because he was the first. He, the he has a special place in my heart. Yeah. But you, there are they, you know, there's they all, there's so many personalities here. It's 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 really fun. Do you name each animal? They're all named. Really? <laughs> yep. So you got 200 names. I do. <laughs> and you know each one. I do, yes. Wow. Isn't that crazy? It is. <laughs> are you are you taking in more animals and are, are you adding more space? Yeah. So what we did was we the year later, the 20 acres next to us came up for sale. So we quickly purchased those. Um, we're landlocked, so that was the only space available. Right. So we got really lucky. So we're on 30 acres now. It's We have an amazing board of directors. Our supporters are incredible. Um, you know, we the whole place is fenced and secure. And we've got, uh, gosh, we've got a full-time employee. Kelly is our animal caregiver. She's absolutely incredible. I don't know what I would do without her. And and uh, like I said, we uh, we have such an amazing board, and we added some really fantastic people this year. So I'm excited. Chris, why why are animals important to you? Um, I think especially for you know I. I because we're a farm animal sanctuary, which is very specific and not, uh, you know, I don't think a lot of people understand uh, a farm animal sanctuary. Um, everybody relates to dogs and cats, right? You know, horses. Lions, and, tigers. Yeah, lions, tigers, sense. sure. Um, and I just wanted to be able to sort of share with the world what I see in all animals. I want people to see how intelligent pigs are, how intelligent cows are, how intelligent chickens are. 
you know, pigs are the fourth smartest animal on the planet. I don't think most people know that. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Um, they are, gosh, they're so smart, Ron. Um, smart as a four-year-old. So if you kind of think of it that way, um, they, uh, their personalities, they're, <laughs> they're so funny. They plot and they scheme. They, uh, you know, they have a very complex language. They understand English or whatever language they're taught. Uh, they have self-recognition. They can recognize a good person from a bad person just by wow. looking at them. You know, wow. they can, um, yeah, they act, they, they think, they judge, they, yeah, they're pretty. So, so we're not talking about like little, little miniature pigs. We're talking about <laughs> regular farm yeah, animal pigs. <laughs> yeah, we, we've got uh, from pot bellies to farm animals. So no such thing as a mini pig. Uh, which a lot of people think there are. So uh, mini pig is any pig under 300 pounds. <laughs> okay, gotcha. And probably the, the a pot belly averages 100 to 250 pounds. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, no. most people don't. And uh, right now, the pet pig situation in this country is insane. 95% of people who get a pet pig will end up getting rid of it wow it's crazy and where yeah. do they go yeah where yeah do where go? do they go exactly it's uh i think we get about 10 phone calls a day yeah. asking oh. if we'll take pet pigs yeah which we had to stop doing because it's it's just don't have crazy. the room so we're really yeah. for mostly the abused animals now and that's 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 not good to hear how much food do you need a month to feed all these animals? <laughs> We feed over, oh my gosh, uh, we're up to 20,000 pounds a month. 20,000 pounds. Wow. Yep. A month. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. It's, it's, That's a lot it's of our, food. It's our biggest expense. Yeah. Right? Five grand a month. <laughs> can <laughs> can you describe to our audience uh, the property? Kind of what it Yeah. What like? uh, you know, I love this property because we're very isolated. We don't have any neighbors per se. Um, we are in on the border of Arcadia. So we are, let's see, north, we're east Punta Gorda, I guess. And I would say for our audience, Punta Gorda <laughs> is probably the southwest Florida. Would that be described? Yeah, southwest Florida. We're closer to Fort Myers. I think most people know Fort Myers. Yeah. And, South of Tampa. South of Tampa, south of Venice, so yeah. Sarasota. Um, yeah, um, you have to go down a dirt road, half a mile to find us. We, it, it's a beautiful property. Um, tons of trees, lots of palm trees, tons of oak trees, pine trees. Uh, we have this big one acre pond as you enter. Um, the property. That must be and, nice. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. Uh, right now, it's sort of a little separated. It's just regular farm fencing. It's not, so it's very see-through. So we've got some thousand pound piggies on the first area where you come in. <laughs> and wow. uh, uh, the house is sort of in the middle of the 10 acres. So behind the house is a big field. And then out on the 20 acres next, right next, adjacent to the property, are our cows and more pigs. Sounds like a beautiful place. Pigs, pigs. It's, it's, really, it's really pretty out here. Can you Very tell nice. us, Chris, about a few of your most memorable rescues? Let's, let's say the hardest ones. Sure. Oh my gosh, there's been some crazy ones. Um, Jimmy was this little, oh, he's the cutest little piggy. He was probably two months old and he was picked up uh, off of the streets in Fort Myers and somebody had poured a caustic substance over his back, which ate away his skin almost down to the spine and um, had to do a little surgery, uh, you know, it was a couple of weeks of healing and uh, he is the most incredible little guy. Uh, he's uh, to see them go from 
such a horrible, horrible, from a horrible place in a horrible situation and to, yeah. to just be, to be abused to that extent. And then to see how joyful he is now. Doing so it's teary eyed yeah. sometimes when I think about yeah. it. Yeah, you're doing God's work. It's um yeah, he's happy now. He loves his belly rubs. It's just it's amazing that, that you know the for, for me just to see that transformation is is pretty incredible. Uh, tell us about the cost of running the sanctuary and how is it funded? Yeah, sure. Well, we are a nonprofit and publicly funded. Um we our monthly operating costs are fifteen thousand dollars, which is quite amazing. Um, we uh, we have an amazing board. We have amazing supporters. Yeah, we're we're doing it. We're uh, we're we're bringing in the money and rescuing animals. And, so it's pretty uh, much funded by donations. Yeah, all donations. Yep. Okay. What what is a typical day running the sanctuary look like for, for you? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> oh my goodness! So you know what I I tell people the hardest part of my job are my dogs in the house. <laughs> <laughs> they probably want some attention. The, the farm animals are really easy. It's my crazy dogs in the house that uh, are uh, <laughs> to take up a lot of my time. <laughs> um, yeah, so gosh, uh, like I said, we, we have a full time employee now, Kelly, and she she does all the hard work now. She does the feeding and um, you know all the medications, and she's also a vet tech. So um, uh, it, it's been so amazing to have her. Uh, uh, she's got to be a like, very busy woman. It's it's she's two hundred animals. <laughs> <She's busy. laughs> So yeah, so morning it's it's you check the animals first. We go around, make sure everybody's safe and walking sure. around, and everybody gets their medications, the ones that need their medications. And uh, feeding time is sort of she's she's got this amazing she has got feeding time. Feeding time is so complicated, Ron. I can't even begin to tell you. I had to, I do it on the weekends, and I'm just like I'm like I don't know how she does this every day. Oh, I see your dog um, there. Yeah, it's Koa. Hi, sweetie. You want to say hi? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, she's got it down pat. Uh, I've uh, uh, it, it's 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 fed in it, feeding in stages because they're all free. It's it's pigs are you know it's it's a crazy noisy. Uh... <laughs> well, it's, it sounds like she's taken a uh, a good load off your. She has. Back. She has. Yeah. So my, most of my time during the week is good old fundraising. Administ administrative yeah. work right yeah administrative um we we um we have some amazing new board members uh this year we're going to be um we're going to be working on a series and uh one of our new board members is the producer director so um yeah it's gonna be fun we got some great stuff planned this year every month we do some type of special fundraiser um we just came off of the Betty White challenge. I don't know if you guys heard about that. Where, no. um, yeah, yeah. So Betty, Betty, uh, Betty White passed away, and she yeah. had said if she had asked everybody just donate five dollars to uh, animal nonprofit of their choice. Oh, okay. So, okay, we're part of that challenge, and um, yeah, fundraising. Gosh, Ron, it's uh, it's it is the hardest part of my job. Yeah, I'm here. All right. <laughs> We, is that uh, you or me? That could be, it could be any one of us. Uh, we might've had a bandwidth problem, but I'm back up. Hello. What were we saying? I forgot. <laughs> uh, you were talking about the fundraising. Yeah, for the fundraising. We just got me off the Betty White fundraiser. It's, it's truly, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely the most challenging part of my job asking for money is always challenging yeah chris what advice would you give to someone uh who wants to do this type of thing are you there oh chris you there yeah Can yeah chris what what advice would you uh give to someone who wants to do this type of thing don't do it yeah don't do it <laughs> don't do it 
a lot of sacrifice. Uh, it is, it is life changing. It is 24 seven, seven days a week. Uh, if you, you know, if, if, if somebody really is serious and want, and is thinking about, especially a farm animal sanctuary, you know, gosh, get your education on the animals, you know, you got to be able to buy the property yourself and live in the house. And there's got to be some kind of, somebody's got to have a job, especially the first couple of years yeah. to support it. Um, right. People do not just give you money because you rescue animals. And I think that's a huge misconception for a lot of people. What and I see, I see so many sanctuaries going under now because of Oh, that. really? Yeah. What lessons have you learned from running the sanctuary? Oh, gosh. <sighs> I've learned to pay it forward. Okay. I've learned a lot of patience. I, I'm always here to help another animal nonprofit if they have questions, if they, uh, if they need advice. Uh, it doesn't happen a lot in our world. There's a lot of competition. There's a lot of uh, um, infighting and um, we're drama free. I'm always ready to help somebody. I'm always ready to give advice. So um, yeah, I, I've definitely learned to pay it forward. I remember people who's helped, helped me in the past and, and that's, you know, that's what I'm here for. That's great. Yeah. Are, Chris, are people allowed to visit the sanctuary? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are by appointment only. So tons of different ways to reach us on our website at littlebearsanctuary.org. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're all over social media as Little Bear Sanctuary. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Chris, uh, what excites you the most going forward? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't begin to tell you how amazing my life is. And given my past, given everything that's got me to this point, to be able, just to be able to do this, yeah. and to have it be successful, and to change the lives of these animals is it's totally worth it. It's, it's everything to me. And I, I, I'm, it's going to, we're going to get bigger. We're going to get, we're going to rescue more animals. Uh, the next five years is going to be amazing. We're going to be working on infrastructure, um, building a big barn and all that good stuff. So uh, sounds hopefully, exciting. Hopefully we have a successful series coming up and uh, that'll be fun too. Oh, great. Now I know people can contact you. Uh, the best way is little bear sanctuary.org yes. or little bear sanctuary instagram facebook you're on there uh, i'm gonna yeah we're everywhere you can google us okay. we're uh yeah we're I'm gonna, to reach. <laughs> I'm gonna include that information in the podcast notes thank Great. you so much thank chris you. for for sharing your story of overcoming adversity and being resilient uh to move forward and achieve a wonderful life goal uh, the work you are doing to improve the quality of the lives of these animals is so inspiring to all of us. And I am sure I speak for everyone listening that we wish uh, nothing but good things for you and Randy going forward. Next time I am in Southwest Florida, uh, yeah. which could be soon, I plan to visit you. Yeah, come and, visit. Yeah, visit. I will. And comments and suggestions to improve the podcast uh, please email us at it's a wrap with rap at gmail.com. Our website is it's a wrap with rap.com. Facebook and our Facebook group is it's a wrap with rap. Uh, we're on Instagram, it's a wrap with rap podcast. All the episodes are on YouTube, it's a wrap with rap the podcast uncut. Thanks everyone for listening. Please stay safe. And for now, it's a wrap. <laughs>